More than 5 million Americans live with Alzheimer's disease. It's a long, hard road, not just for those who suffer from the disease, but also for the caregivers, children tasked with caring for an increasingly dependent parent. Four years ago, ABC had the chance to put cameras inside a Texas home as a couple took on this terrible challenge. And my co-anchor, Cynthia McFadden, has followed the family ever since. Cynthia? Terry, one of the things we learned over these years is just how little most of us really understand about the disease itself. I thought I knew a lot about Alzheimer's, but after Blaine and I took part in an experiment simulating what it's like to have the disease, I found out I didn't. It was 12 minutes that changed my life. I love you, Mom. Blaine Wilson's mother, Lawanda, came to live with him four years ago. He had just married his new wife, Georgia five weeks earlier. Blaine soon learned it was much harder than he thought. Oh, God. Blaine! She's going to drop her car. And later, she did. She lit fires. She wandered off. But Lawanda doesn't look sick, and she often seems fine, which makes it hard for Blaine and Georgia to understand how limited she really is. And that leads to frustration and resentment. Just tell her to wash her clothes. I'm trying to wash them. I'll bet you get her back. She knows what to do. Are you afraid? I mean... No, I'm not afraid. You know, I mean, it's my mother. You don't understand. The more we watched the tapes, the more it became apparent how little Blaine and Georgia really understood what was happening to Lawanda's mind. Do you really feel you understand the world your mother now lives in? No. What's I, going on in her head, her brain? I have no idea. I, I have no idea. I need to understand that then. I need to know what it's like. Individuals with dementia say, we're hearing all this stuff and they can't turn it off. Then we're each given five tasks to perform and only 12 minutes to accomplish them. I'd like you to find the tie and put it on. I can't hear you. Blaine has a hard time concentrating from the start. Your time begins now. As he enters, Blaine is immediately disoriented. He staggers, reminding us of the way his mother looked on our tapes. Blaine tries to accomplish his first task, clearing the dishes off the table. But when he goes to put them away, he can't find the kitchen. So he gives up. Well, <laughs> I don't know where to put them. Blaine finally finds the kitchen, but he can't remember why he's there. And again, the similarities to his mother were astounding. She would open cabinets, and then she would shut them. Mother, what are you doing? Nothing. But Blaine is doing a lot better than I am. What the heck is this? It's only about two minutes into the experiment, and the noise from the headset is driving me crazy. God! So annoying! As I try to accomplish my first white task, find a white sweater, I work myself into a frenzy. White sweater. Remember, what I'm hearing is this. No. And believe me, it drives everything else out of your head. Right. Annoyed! This is tough. I felt confused, kind of panicky. If I had to go through very much of that, I just might go crazy. All right, that's not a sweater. That's not a white sweater. I mean, you do understand why people start talking to themselves. This is not a white sweater. I was trying to organize my mind by saying, okay. Okay. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Not a white sweater. Not there. I don't know about that. You're doing great. PK was in the room, and at one point when I sat down in frustration on the sofa, and she said, um, you're doing great. Why don't you start with finishing setting the table? And she told me what else I was supposed to do. I'll remember that. The reinforcement. Yeah, because you feel so alone. And you feel so frustrated, and there's no, you know, you, you don't know what you're supposed to do, and it's so dark. Reluctantly, I go back into the kitchen to try to find the plates. Glasses. How long have I been doing this? About 20 hours? I'm not doing great. I'm not doing great. And once again, I get distracted and go looking for that white sweater. This looks good enough. This is like a, OK, it's not exactly a sweater. All right, I'll put it over my shoulders. 
And I end up looking a little eccentric. Her son's going to say, Mama, you can't go out like that. Right. You're getting a little off here. God. In the meantime, Blaine has moved on to the bedroom, where he's supposed to match six pairs of socks. The hell? I don't know, man. Instead, he starts folding everything in sight. I swear, man, this is crazy. By now, Blaine seems to have forgotten his list of chores. He was supposed to have found this tie, for example, and put it on. Instead, he folds it along with everything else. Shoot. It reminded us of the time Blaine's mother set out to cook something for lunch, then got distracted washing dishes, and didn't remember until the pot was burning. Plates. After 12 excruciating minutes, the experiment was over. I give up. Blaine, your time is up. Huh? Your time is up. Oh, shit. What an unpleasant experience. Damn. Yeah. I couldn't do anything. Blaine was visibly shaken. Yeah, what a way to try and get through each day. And uh, kind of scary. In what way? Uh, I, almost like uh, panic. For both of us, new insights. It's a, a deep sense of confusion. The thing that shocks me the most is that I couldn't remember five simple instructions. I couldn't imagine living like that. It's life-altering. They need your help. They need your understanding.